to the auditorium of SIHH. In this space, all through the week of the salon, we meet the people and the ideas of fine watchmaking. This session is devoted to Vacheron Constantin and to some of its latest innovations. It's going to be moderated by Suzanne Wong. Uh, she's going to introduce her guest. Please, Suzanne, the stage is yours. Bruno for the lovely intro. Welcome everyone to the uh, SIHH live session of Vacheron Constantin. I'm Suzanne Wong, I'm the editor at large of Revolution, and uh, with me today is the ever fascinating and scintillating Christian Sermonnet, the heritage and star director of Vacheron Constantin. And uh, how are you feeling today, Christian? Well, after this introduction, I'm feeling extremely well, <laughs> of course. So thank you for scintillating. So now I feel uh, all right. I'm just, I was just counting this morning, this is my 23rd SIHH. So I'm really fine. I think we have an exciting product and, well, mm -hmm. I think we, we will have a great session. Perfect. Let's see if this works. So this is the piece that we're going to be talking about, which I'm sure that a lot of you have already discovered either by social media or even by stopping by the booth at Vacheron Consultant. So uh, before we head into the session proper, I'd like to share with you guys a little video that features the Vacheron Consultant traditional twin beat perpetual calendar, please. So the watch that we've just seen, the traditional twin beat perpetual calendar, it's the groundbreaking new timepiece from Vacheron Constantin. And I don't use this term lightly, it is groundbreaking, not just mechanically, but also in terms of approach. Uh, if you guys have any time, if you haven't already seen it, please stop by the booth. I urge you all strongly to stop by the Vacheron Constantin booth and discover it for yourselves, get to know it, come to touch it, and yeah, just um, get to know it a bit better. Uh, now, today we're very excited to talk about innovations, but as the title screen suggested, we're also here to look at the history of innovation at Vacheron Constantin, which is why Christian is here today, because uh, I think a lot of you will agree with me, those of you that know him, he's a walking archive of everything really? amazing that Vacheron Constantin have ever done, and he's here to share, us, share with us uh, a little more about this very aspect of Vacheron Constantin. So, Christian, I would say that we definitely all agree that the Twin Beat is uh, innovative, but this is innovation that it didn't come from nowhere. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about the sure. unique spirit of innovation sure, that sure. Uh, is unique to Vacheron Constantin. So I think it's, it's very important to, to recall that Vacheron Constantin was founded in 1755, so many of you, you know that. So we have more than 260 years of experience, mm -hmm. and uh, since the very beginning, we have made, made uh, very high-end watchmaking. And I think <coughs> we wouldn't be here in 2019 if we, we, we were not innovative. So to go, uh, so we, we think that innovation is something which is very important, which is very much in the heart of the, of the company. But for us, the, the innovation is not only a matter of, uh, you know, creating new complications or talking about really uh, technical watchmaking. Innovation can be also in the field of uh, design, obviously, because the design part is highly important for us, but it can be also in the field of uh, time indication and say uh, time display, or even uh, I'm thinking about the case of the Quai de Lille, for example, mm -hmm. the versatility and service for the client. So I think that for us, it's, uh, it's very important to introduce this uh, session with the fact that for us, uh, innovation is really uh, at the center of, uh, of, uh, of our company mm -hmm. and is dedicated to, to our clients. Mm -hmm. And um, well, this is a very nice example of what we can call uh, innovation. So this is the reference. 57260, which is the, the most complicated watch ever made in history, which was made in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, I, the first thing I want to talk about is really this, uh, the customer-centric approach that we see in the, in the Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar. Now, this is the world's first and only timepiece 
with uh, two balancers that allows you to switch between a high-frequency active mode and a low-frequency uh, standby mode, which allows you to extend the power reserve by up to 65 days, which I don't have to tell you is an extremely, extremely long time. And the fact that this, this uh, extension of the power reserve is something that perfectly matches the function of the perpetual calendar. Now, we all know what perpetual calendars are and their grades and all, but the fact is, we don't wear them for a couple of days or even a week or so. You set it aside and you come back to it later, you always have to adjust and update the calendar indications. And first of all, no one has time for that. And second of all, it's just like, why should we have to do that? Now, the Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar is special in that it, um, the perpetual part of its perpetual calendar is no longer restricted by that aspect of its short power reserve. It has an extended power reserve that really allows you to wear it at your convenience. If you set it aside for two months, you put it back on, and it's still working. Everything is still up to date. You still have your perpetual calendar indications perfectly going strong. Um, so to me, this is a very strong aspect of the TwinBeat Perpetual Calendar because it's user-focused. It looks after itself. And in that case, in its sense, it also looks after you. It looks after your needs. Uh, Christian, how would you say that Vashram Kunstutan have really uh, utilized this user-centric approach uh, in the past and in its watches? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, it's, it would be nice to talk uh, with some examples from, from the past. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, well, I, I took with me some, some, some watches coming from our heritage, from our private collection. I think it's interesting to, to, to go through these watches uh, with this uh, very special uh, user focus innovation uh, in mind. So this, uh, this the very, very first timepiece will be the, the American 1921. Mm -hmm. So this is a watch that uh, probably many of you know. So it's important to, to say that well, we have produced this watch in the very early days of the, the 20th century for, for notably American customers. And uh, <coughs> this uh, diagonal lecture of the, of the hour of the time is something which is very much, very much associated with uh, drivers. And, uh, but also, it's, uh, it's good to know that uh, such watches were used by keynote speakers. And uh, al we also have in our archives a uh, letter from a, a preacher, a re reverend, mm -hmm. who was using that particular watch during, during its sermons. So I think it's, it's a quite interesting approach of uh, being innovative and creative in, uh, in time display. So maybe we move to the next one. So this one is another important timepiece uh, for Vachon Constantin. So this is the, the so-called uh, world-time Louis Cotier. Mm -hmm. So Louis Cotier was a, was a, was a watchmaker. And uh, in 1930, he wrote to Vachon Constantin saying, I'd like to, I'd like to present to you uh, an innovation, which uh, I think is, uh, c could be nice. And we would like to present it to you uh, before anyone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, the result of this uh, collaboration has been the very first world time with this uh, Cotier system from 1932. Mm -hmm. This particular watch here that you can see at the screen is a model which is very similar, but from 1946. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think this is very interesting because a lot of people are familiar with this, but normally they associate it with a, a different brand. And this is something that not a lot of people know about Vacheron Constantin, yes. would you say? Absolutely, <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, you're totally right. So I think that this is a, a typical example, again, of uh, this time a complication which, uh, which is really thought with uh, the, the client in mind. Mm -hmm. So the world time, a very, very easy to understand system already in 1932. Mm -hmm. So if we make a move, we're moving to one of the watches I love the most at Vacheron Constantin. Mm -hmm. I can Which prove it, I wear it. So this is, this is for me a fantastic example of the 70s. So, well, we, we know that the, in, in the watch industry, the 70s is considered maybe not as the best decades in terms, in terms of design. However, I think that this is really a mine for exceptional timepieces. So this is, a, we could say this is a dual time. So this is a watch from the 70s, which has two, uh, two manual winding movements. Obviously, this was used for, for people who were traveling. Mm -hmm. But I think what is really interesting is that is the fact that this watch is, is how this, these two movements are housed is, uh, in a highly creative case, which is not only asymmetrical, but also very cambered. And uh, on top of that, it's supposed to be a men's watch, which is not exactly what you could imagine. But the result, really, it's something uh, absolutely uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. And even if uh, <coughs> this, I think, underlines once again this, uh, this quest for, for being innovative, being creative, uh, while thinking about the client in, in Exactly, in focusing inside. on what the client yep. is looking for, focusing on what the client needs. Now, the next thing that you think about, I think, 
when you look at the Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar is that you'd be surprised at its size and its dimensions, actually, because if you think about uh, something as innovative and creative and complicated as this, you would imagine that it's, it's quite large. And uh, I think one thing that we do need to focus on is uh, how important the miniaturization effort is with this watch, because small and functional is much harder than doing something when you have a lot of space to play around with. Small is efficient. We all love efficiency. We're here. I don't want to reinforce any national stereotypes, but there's a reason why watchmaking is focused in Switzerland, Germany, and Japan. And um, so the dimensions of this watch, 41 millimeter diameter, and in terms of height, let me get this exactly right, it's 12.3 millimeters high, which I think we'll all agree is extremely wearable. The movement itself, the caliber 3610, is uh, 32 millimeters in diameter and 6 millimeters thick which I think those of us that understand watchmaking at a more technical level are, are going to realize that this is such an accomplishment in and of itself. Now, this is definitely not the first time we see this kind of ultra-compact expertise from Vashon Kosata and Christian. Tell us more. Very much. So again, we, we're going to play with some, some examples uh, on the screen. So I was very happy, or yes, I was very happy to, to put this watch uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the presentation because I think this is an outstanding example of the mastery of Vacheron Constantin in the field of ultra thin movements. So <coughs> we have to think that uh, Vacheron Constantin made in 1931 only three of these pocket watches. And uh, believe me, Suzanne, but the movement is 0 0.9 millimeter thick. 0 0.9. So this is, I think, one of the records in the history of, of watch making. Mm -hmm. So we did only three. And uh, on top of that, I would like to add that the design of this pocket watch is really absolutely pure and amazing. So that's one way to create, uh, I would say, when, we talk, when you talk about ultra capacity, I think ultra thin watches are definitely uh, uh, an history that we, we, have to, we, talk, we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's why I think the next one is also a quite an important one for us. So this is the, the caliber 1003 from 1955. So that uh, you can see at the left, so this is the comparison between the movement and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the match. So another comparison can be made for, for my Swiss uh, colleagues. Is, uh, it's exactly the dimension of a 20 centimes coin of Switzerland. And uh, this movement became famous uh, during the, for the 200th anniversary of Vachon Constantin in 1955. It's good to know that we are still using this movement uh, and in the history collection. So it's uh, another impressive example of ultra thin designs. The, the total thickness of the caliber 1003 is 1.64 millimeter. So we are moving to something, uh, we are still talking about ultra thin designs, but now <coughs> in, uh, in, the in the field the of high complications. Size, yeah. So uh, I took with me the examples of minute repeaters, ultra thin minute repeaters. So at the left, to, to just to make you a confidence, so this is the reference 4261. So this is my favorite Vacheron Constantin ever. I think that uh, this is uh, an outstanding, a fabulous design from 1943. And this beautiful design has been made possible only uh, thanks to, you, to the use of a super thin caliber, uh, which is only 3.3 millimeter thick, which is, uh, which is another record for, mm -hmm. for minute repeater. So I really love this combination of uh, aesthetics, sleek aesthetics, very thin cases, together with the grand complication. And I think that uh, the patrimony uh, minute repeater from 2015 also reflects this quest for excellence in design combined with high complication in a very elegant package. Closer from us now, obviously, I was going to forget it, but it's highly important. So if you remember, uh, some of you here, some two years ago, <coughs> we were presenting the Celestia. And the Celestia is, uh, is a very interesting timepiece for, for many aspects. Uh, it has uh, 23 complications displayed on two faces, which is huge. It has more than 500 components. And uh, it, has, uh, uh, it, it has an impressive uh, power reserve of uh, three weeks, thanks to six uh, barrels. So we are talking about uh, Celestia uh, because of this ultra capacity, considering the power reserve, since the movement with all this complication and the six barrels was only 8.7 millimeter thick. Mm -hmm. So that's another example of ultra capacity. Mm -hmm. Even in the case of a, a super complicated watch like this, Absolutely. that's impressive. I feel that what's really going to blow everyone's mind here is really how energy efficient this watch really is because we have a mode that allows it to extend up to 65 days. I mean, we say 65 days, it's a bit more, but 65 days is what we talk about in terms of a reasonable margin of uh, performance, uh, timekeeping. 
So you have two modes. You have the active mode, you wear it when you're out and about. It operates at a frequency of 5 hertz, which um, I should state at this point, this is the first time that Vashon Konsuta are using this frequency. Uh, it has a power reserve in this mode, the 4 hertz active mode, um, of four days, which I think is, uh, is really impressive because the other 5 hertz uh, movement I think that's out there, that's the most common one, has a power reserve of like two days or something like that. So four days for this movement is really something else. And then you have the standby mode, which operates at 1.2 hertz. Again, the first time that Vashron Konstantin is using this frequency. And uh, you wind it up, you set it aside, you can just leave it alone for two months. And uh, you pick it up again, everything still works. 65 days, ladies and gentlemen, that is a long time. I think you'll all agree it's longer than uh, uh, some marriages out there. Uh, my first one, for example. Uh, just kidding. Uh, now, not only that, but certain of the perpetual calendar mechanisms have actually been redesigned completely to consume uh, four times less energy. Um, this is an aspect of the watch that I'm sure a lot of you are extremely fascinated with, and trust me, it is super interesting to find out more about this, but we haven't got all day here, so when you have time, I urge you once again, stop by the Vacheron booth. Um, someone there asked for Jerome, he will explain to you everything you could possibly want to know about the technical side of the energy-saving aspect of the Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar. Now, Christian, yes. now it's your turn back again. How can you tell us how Vacheron Constantin has innovated in terms of uh, extended power reserves and energy-efficient watches? Yes. <clears throat> So I think we have to, to start uh, well with something which is, uh, I would say, few people know, uh, finally. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about that beautiful Art Deco clock. So again, we're moving to, to the year 1931. So this is a, this is a rock crystal a table clock, mm -hmm. which has a patented Vachon Constantin movement. So this is a constant force uh, system, which uh, to linked with a... Um, um, two mainsprings, so it's a double barrel uh, system, and we get uh, 30 uh, days of power reserve. In a, and the, obviously, with this system, all the energy has been um, particularly well distributed thanks to the constant force escapement. So, we did, uh, interestingly, we did, Vachon uh, Constantin did uh, 12 blanks of this, uh, of this clock, and uh, finally, less than 10 clocks were, were made. Now, I think we'll all agree that um, in terms of sophisticated mechanisms, they're fine, they're super impressive, but they only really make a difference if the watch performs as well, and I mean this in terms of chronometry. Uh, precision is a big deal, people talk about it, and uh, it is important. A so watch gives information, it's not just a pretty thing with hands that do whatever they want. Um, now, one of the most visually direct ways that uh, a watch can express its level of precision is through instantaneous jumping indications, which is something that we see here in the Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar. It has instantaneously jumping perpetual calendar indications. Uh, we talked earlier a bit about how certain parts of the perpetual calendar mechanism use four times less energy than a conventional perpetual calendar, and the jumping, the instantaneous jumping uh, indications on the Twin Beat Perpetual Calendar, let me tell you, are a big part of this. Um, precision in a wrist watch, in any watch pr pretty much, in any kind of uh, timekeeping uh, creation, is directly th related to how well the barrels are able to supply the balance with a continuous and optimized uh, level of torque. So a lot of these subsidiary approaches to precision also play a part because, for example, if you have two balances each running at different frequencies and it's important to be able to precisely uh -huh, switch between the two without even losing a microsecond of a beat. And uh, in order to solve this, you would use an all or nothing switching mechanism, which you will observe in the twin beat, in order to alternate precisely between the two without losing any time. So, uh, Christian, maybe you can give us a bit more uh, in terms of examples of how precision approaches have been used to support yes. overall mechanical precision Certainly. at Vashon Kosinta. So, let, let's move to some examples. So, <coughs> you are, we are talking about a twin beat perpetual calendar with instant jumping system. Just to remind you, we did our very first uh, instant jumping uh, perpetual calendar in 1902. So, this is this pocket watch here that we have in our private collection. But uh, besides the perpetual calendar, we also have other jumping or instant jumping systems. So we'll see some examples from the past. Can you move? So OK, so uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, jumping hours. So I took uh, not only one single watch, but three. Mm -hmm. 
So these watches are from 1929, so the very early uh, jumping uh, watches from Vachon Constantin. And uh, I think that those are really nice examples of, uh, of such systems. <coughs> Obviously, like you were mentioning, Suzanne, such systems require a lot of care in the manufacturing and in, this, in the setting as well, because obviously you have the, the hour has to change exactly at the right time. If not, it's a terrible situation. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a three nice examples. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very interesting complication that we have also re revisited in 1997 with the, um, with the Saltarello, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which, has, which is a similar display. However, the, the minutes are retrograding. So this is an additional complication. So we made this, this uh, beautiful timepiece in a limited edition of uh, 400 watches plus 100 in platinum. I was just moving to the to last one. So when we go closer for, from us, so we have, to, uh, we have to talk about this particular timepiece here. So if you, this very few people know, in fact, that uh, the movement of this timepiece is a proof of concept. So uh, in, in reality, uh, the, the engineers, the designers who have made the pocket watch 57 to 60, they wanted to test their sy some systems. And this is why they have created this, uh, this uh, absolutely beautiful and outstanding uh, timepiece which is Le Calim 1990. And so there are plenty of uh, interesting things to talk about. Mm -hmm. However, in the, in, the, in the context of what you are explaining, I think we will just take one, take off one example, which is uh, the fact that uh, the anchor pallets mm -hmm. are, can, can be really finely adjusted by two micro springs which are located in the anchor itself. And this is a patent by Vachon Constantin, am I Thank you so much, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, the last aspect that we can talk about is really the twin beat aspect of the watch itself because we're not just talking about mechanics here, we're talking about a big picture approach to how wristwatches intersect with our lives. And I've saved this point until the end because honestly, there, there are no previous examples of how this has been done before at Vashon Constantin or indeed in the history of watchmaking. It's not just a new watch, it's a new kind of watch. And this is why we're here because we're not just talking about we're talking about history of innovation, we're not talking about history of repetition. And innovation needs to continue in order to perpetuate this history, am I right, Christian? Uh, it's the first and only watch, let me repeat that again, it's the first and only watch that allows you to change, sort of change gears, almost like you would change gears in a car or a bike to sort of, um, sort of uh, yeah, optimize your fuel, your power consumption in order for a better performance. Uh, you put it on active, you take it on, you put it on standby, it's almost like I'm not sure if I'm going to get in co into trouble for this comparison, but it's almost like a smartphone. When you're using it, you're using it. But when you set it aside and you're not touching it, you know that when you pick it up again, it's good to go. All your notifications, all your messages will still be there in the most up-to-date form. Um, how many watches do this? I think up to this point, we can say zero, but not anymore, thanks to the Russian Constantin traditional twin beat perpetual calendar. Um, and uh, this is the first step in a new direction for watchmaking, but a big one. And our, I would like you to maybe, it would be nice to think about what this means in terms of watchmaking for us now, in terms of the future. Uh, Christian, do you have anything to add before we take a few questions from the audience, perhaps? No, I, th I think that uh, I, I need to come back to, to, to the very beginning, in which we, was, we were talking about the fact that we were, we, were, we were created a long time ago, and we are still here, and uh, that innovation uh, is something which is really one of the reasons why we are still here. 264 years after, so I think this is the most important. What I'm, I'm very happy with the twin beat is the fact that uh, twin beat is thought exactly in the same philosophy, which is really to reconsider a com complication and thinking about how how is it for the client something new and something interesting and something which brings an additional value for for him. So I think uh, for 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 this reason, twin beat is a is a very important timepiece. Thank you very much for the sum up, Christian. Thank you very much. Do we have me. any questions from the floor? Anyone would like to ask uh, myself or Christian, or anyone, in fact, any questions? In that case, I would like to thank everyone very much for your attention here. Please join me in uh, putting your hands together to, for Christian Selmani, Heritage and Star Director of Vashon Constantin, for joining us today. I urge you all to stop by the booth, and if you do see Christian, like walking around the halls today or any other day, Please feel free to ask him to stop, check out what he's wearing on the wrist because I promise you, it will be something new and exciting every single day. Uh, thank Great. you very much once again. Have a good SIHH. Thank you, Suzanne.
Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Suzanne. And thank you, all of you, for coming. And to those who have been watching online, we're going to cut to the live stream now. We're going to be back at uh, 12 p.m. Geneva time for another session here in the auditorium. We're going to talk about fine watchmaking for digital natives with Maison Ressence. 12 p.m. Geneva time here. Goodbye for now. Thank you very much.